I'm Greg Garbos of Four Season Tools. We're here at City Bitty Farm and the headquarters of Four Season Tools. We're going to be talking about today is roll-up sides and the components associated with roll-up sides. What we have behind me is a custom greenhouse that we're growing microgreens in here at City Bitty Farm and it has roll-up sides on the side of it. The difference between roll-up sides and drop-down sides is that roll-up sides start at the bottom and they spool up with the plastic. Drop-down sides have a curtain rod at the top that actually drops down and the curtain bunches on the bottom. So what we have behind us is roll up sides. The way that the system works is that there's a, there's a roll bar inside of the system and there's this hand crank. All right, so what we can do is we take the, the hand crank, we put it out straight, and this allows us to roll the crank up and down. So when it's all the way down, we have a nice seal on the bottom with a hat purlin, or there's also some extrusion you can use called roll lock that the, uh, that the roll bar can tighten around. And then when we want to roll it up, we can either roll it into itself or out of itself, depending on whether I go clockwise or counterclockwise. So on this situation, on this side, I like to roll the roll bar into the plastic. That way, none of the water or the rainwater comes down and will catch up inside of that plastic. When you have it where you want it, there's a little tri bar linkage at the top that allows you to take the crank, move it over to the side, and that's what will lock it in place. Please be careful because there's a lot of weight in the roll bars and when you pull it up, that weight can cause it to spin. I've actually heard stories of people having their hand cranks start to spin and actually broken a tooth. So some other important components of the, of the roll up sides is that we have a pocket here. So between the first and second hoop on both ends, we've got some plastic that's permanently in place. That means that when the roll up sides are all the way down and closed, that that cold air has to come in from the edge and has to travel through that first hole, full, the first full six feet before the air can get inside of the greenhouse. The other thing that you can do is you can air inflate your roll up sides. So in this situation, you can see this little black piece right here. There's a jumper hose that connects the air inflation from the roof plastic to the sidewall plastic. When the roof plastic air inflates, it also inflates the sidewall. That means when this is closed, it air inflates the side to give you some insulation. It also creates a really nice seal between the plastic for the roll up sides and the pockets. I do recommend that you not have your air inflation blower on when you're rolling the plastic up and down. So what you can actually do is you can uh, damage some of that plastic. Since this is two sheets of plastic because it's air inflated, we had to go through and we actually had to use a poly sealer and we had to glue the two pieces of plastic together. It's just an electric heat sealer and they go ahead and it crimps these two together. We put two full seals along each edge of the roll up side to make sure that that air would stay inside. The other important component of the roll-up side is this rope wall. Sometimes it's also called a wind rope. Depending on your uh, whether you have metal or, uh, or wooden hip boards and baseboards, there's different ways that it attaches. But basically, it starts on the bottom and then it zigzags all the way along uh, in order to make sure that when the roll-up side is down and wind gets inside, it isn't just blowing that roll-up side all the way out. Another slightly uh, unique part of this roll-up system is it actually has, for the, it has metal hip boards with integrated gutters. So the top of that plastic is actually put inside of a plastic attachment channel and there's a full rainwater capture gutter on side of it. There's many different iterations of roll-up sides, that's just how it's configured here. Now that we've kind of shown you how it works, I'm going to talk about some of the actual components. For the cranks that we use and that we sell, we start with a small, what we just call a hand crank, a roll-up side hand crank. Just some uh, 1 and 3 8 pipe that's been welded and swaged on one end. We put some plastic caps in it and this is just a really simple uh, mechanism. It's made in the United States out of American steel so we really like it. What it allows you to do is to put any length of crank on the end of this. So in the case of what I was showing you here, we've got the hand crank and then we've got a six foot extension pipe that goes all the way up. On the top of it we have something called a tri bar linkage. Sometimes it's also called a universal joint. There's several different types of them available. This is kind of showing you a very small part of that same setup where you've got that hand crank and then this tri bar linkage. It allows the crank to move independently and then when you have it in place it allows you to lock it in place. Uh, a lot of times people recognize this mechanism because it's used a lot on tractor trailers when they're putting the tarp over the back of a big, uh, a big rig. Uh, these tri bar linkages can come round on both sides and then for the ones that we sell we actually weld a uh, square piece on the side of it. We do that so that that square piece is compatible with aluminum roll bars. When you're talking about your roll bar specifically, there's several different options. The one that we currently are using at the time the video is taken is actually an aluminum roll bar with an integrated plastic attachment channel. So this is a fully aluminum piece and then there's a channel inside of it. So you can use the same plastic attachment wire that you use to attach to your roll bar that you do when you attach your plastic to your building. 
Uh, it's a little bit more of a spendy setup, but we really like it because the serviceability is really there. So if you ever need to replace the plastic, it's as simple as taking that plastic attachment wire out and putting it back in. The roll bars attach to the universal joint or the tri bar linkage with that welded square piece and some self-tapping screws. And that at the seams of the different pieces of roll bars, they actually use a splice plate. This is a one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch square splice and allows multiple pieces of the roll bar to be slid inside of each other. These are actually two different versions of uh, roll bars, aluminum roll bars from different companies. So there's several options out there. One of the other common options, which is a little bit more of an affordable option, but I do think uh, um, I prefer the aluminum roll bars. It's something called roll bar cap. In that scenario, you take a one and three eighths pipe, lots of times it'll be a thin gauge pipe, like a 17 gauge, as opposed to a 14 gauge. And then to secure the plastic, you use something called roll bar cap. Um, this is one version of roll bar cap. There's also another thing that I've seen called an eye channel, but they basically work the same way that the plastic goes in between the pipe and the aluminum extrusion. And then this pinches the two together and sandwiches them together. Then you put your self-tapping screws into your roll bar cap. Um, I've seen several people make a mistake by thinking that the little lips that are inside of this roll bar cap are plastic attachment channel. So people will actually use plastic attachment wire inside of this roll bar. That's not what these lips are designed for. These lips are designed so that when the screw heads are put inside of this roll bar cap, that as this spins, those screw heads aren't damaging the plastic. So when you put these two together, you want to make sure that all of your screw heads are inside in between that. Again, this is called roll bar cap, and sometimes I've seen other versions that are called eye channel. Um, here's a, another version that uh, I haven't really seen in a while, but uh, it's still kind of a neat concept. It's actually a roll bar that comes in two pieces. The plastic goes in between the two pieces, and then these are either screwed together or bolted together, and that's what attaches the plastic to the roll bars. Here's another uh, version right here. This is a reinforced poly. It's a woven poly. And in this scenario, there's actually an aluminum extrusion that goes on the top that slides the uh, roll up curtain into that. And then there's roll bars here that also slide in and out of this curtain so that this can actually roll up in a similar way. So there's plenty of uh, different versions. Um, the cranks themselves, there's also a lot of versions. You know, here's, uh, here's one crank where actually an Amishman had actually taken a, a universal joint off of an automobile and, uh, and just did it so that they could have a crank on one side use an American-made universal joint and then connect it to, uh, to their roll bars this way. When you start talking about long buildings, you're talking about a lot of weight with this roll bar. So you can also get some mechanical advantage. So sometimes I've seen different types of uh, cranks. This is one uh, setup uh, that's also used by some Amish out of Ohio. It takes a, um, a gearbox right here. I think this gearbox has a, either an eight to one or a 13 to one ratio. And as you basically twist the hand crank, it, uh, it allows the roll bar to move. For this system to work properly, this needs to be on a guide pipe. So as the roll bar goes up and down, this whole mechanism will actually go up and down along with the roll up sides. Typically when we do long buildings, we usually just put a crank on either end of the building and that way you can actually have additional flexibility with the building that you can open up it. So if we were to do like a 144 foot building, we would do like a 72 foot roll up side from this end and then a 72 foot roll up side from this end. Again, there's a lot of different variations and options, and one of the things that we try to do is try to find the best parts, find the best system to put it together. And we found that the simplest, cheapest, easiest system is to use the crank and then go ahead and use the aluminum roll bars. And then you have the options of whether you want to air inflate that or whether or not you want to integrate it with gutters. It's a, it can be worked with metal baseboards, metal hip boards, as well as wooden baseboards and wooden hip boards. Um, one other point of caution is that when you are uh, securing your plastic to your roll bar, when it's all the way down, you want to make sure that you're not doing that super tight. If you really stretch that plastic and try to get that plastic attachment wire in, what can actually happen is your roll bars, instead of sitting on top of your baseboards, will actually lip, lift up off of your baseboards. So when we install it, we like to have the plastic already in at the top. It goes all the way down to the bottom. When the roll bar is there, we do put that plastic in and we make sure not to do it super tight. When you're skinning your building for the first time, you can actually go ahead and run your plastic from your baseboard all the way over your roof down to this other baseboard. And then a single piece of plastic, you can get your roof plastic and install both of your roll-up sides at the same time. It's a very easy way to do it. Um, with our kits, we try to make sure that there's always the option of replacing the roll-up sidewall plastic without having to replace the roof plastic. So at the top of our roll-up sides, there's always a plastic attachment channel right there. You would never want to be in a situation where you've damaged your roll-up sides. I mean, these things are going up and down multiple times a day, potentially and your roof plastic is fine, you wouldn't want to be in a situation where you actually have to replace your roof plastic because you need to service your roll-up sides. So there's a lot of information there, but hopefully that's a helpful primer on some information about roll-up sides on high tops.